Okay, hello. This is Dr. James, and today I'm going to talk about my... Okay, it's Thunder Optics $99 spectrometer. I have the software running in the background. Oh, what's this? And, uh, very cool. Works through USB. Uh, goes from about 270 nanometers to about 1200 nanometers, so into the ultraviolet and the infrared. Uh, what the cheapest spectrometer I found, uh, people are very responsive when I uh, wrote them and had some issues, able to export uh, commerce separated variables and uh, also uh, export a PDF of the uh, spectrum and it will find the peaks for you and tell you what they are, label the peaks. I think you can do a calibration, I don't do that in this video, but um, very cool. So I'll go, I'll go through the unboxing of this guy and um, setting it up and showing its operation and uh, let's get started okay so here we go straight from france i think this is our spectrometer let's take a look at what's in here oh, this is very exciting okay come on Taped up pretty good. Okay. Remember, don't cut yourself with your razor blade if you're using a razor blade. Wow. Look at this. Okay. So here we go. So it looks like the only thing is in this box is this bubble wrap thing. And uh, let's cut this with a razor blade. Let's see what's inside of here. Okay, lots of tape. It's taped up really good. Okay. Okay, looks like there might be hopefully some directions on the inside here. Oh, there we go. Let's take a look at this up here. Okay, so here is our Thunder Optic Spectrometer. And let's see what's inside the bag here. Looks like it comes with a USB cable. And, wow, absolutely no directions, okay, slit, 0 0.9 millimeters, grading, 1,000, what's that, oh, per meter, 1,000 lines per meter, USB 2. I'll have to probably go to their website and see if they have some software you can download because there's no directions at all with this thing. Okay. Very cool though. I'll probably have to run out of Windows machine. I usually run Linux because I hate Windows and I hate Bill Gates for many reasons. But unfortunately people sometimes only write their software for Windows machines, so I'll have to check their website and see what the options are. Okay. Okay, so I guess they sent me an email, and uh, the email gave me a link to Google Documents, and uh, it has some documents that tell you how to run the spectrometer, and looks like this one's an EXE file for possibly for a Windows machine. So I'll see if I can download these and uh, and install it on a Windows machine and see if we can get this thing to work. Should be interesting. Okay, so I uh, got the uh, program 
on this computer. And that is the icon for it. Now it's hard to see, it's a very small screen. But um, I started up a second ago and it, I'm not sure if the spectrometer needs to be plugged in or not. We got a USB plug here. Let's see if I can plug it into the computer. Okay. And uh, oh, look at that. The computer's making noise. Let's try to start this thing up. Sometimes I'm not sure. Sometimes you have to start up the program first and then plug the thing in. And if you don't, it messes it up. I don't, I'm not saying this particular one, but other things I've had. Okay, here's our program. Let's take a look here. Okay, let's see if we can move this stuff around. Okay, so... I am not sure what we got here. Here we got files. We can, I guess, exit, tools, video in control, trim points, languages, English, help. Okay. About visible UVA near in uh, spectrometer. Okay. Uh, let's see. And I'm not sure what this is. So it opened up two windows. RGBA 320 by 420. Open source panel. Open front panel. Default for all. I have no idea. Okay, let's see. Well, video controls. Okay, so I guess it toggles that toggles the video control on and off. Spectrum image. Camera image. Total image. I have no idea. Okay, so anyway, we've got our spectrometer hooked up to this guy, and I guess I'll try to figure out how to make it work. Okay, let's see. Get this thing going again. Okay, so it looks like what we had to do to get this thing working is uh, it's not responding. Okay, so the way we got this working, I was fiddling with this some, is you click on video input, and it had three different inputs, and it had none chosen, so I had to go click. A USB 2 camera. Okay. Initially, it was was not working with anything. Okay, so it was just something like that. So we click on this guy, and uh, we'll put it on USB 2 camera input because uh, this is we're coming in through the USB. And look at that! Very cool. We're getting a spectrum out of this guy. And let me just point it at the monitor here because that's convenient. Oh, look at that. We can see the colors of the pixels there. Okay. We'll point it at the light up there. It might be too far away for it to see. Oh, look at that. A very different spectrum. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that. Maybe we can get some other sources of light here. Let's see. I don't know if it's, we'll see this or not. No, it's not even going to light. Oh, come on. Oh, 
Oh, maybe I didn't like the piezoelectric. It seemed to lock up. Okay, so I wanted to test my spectrometer. I've been making some um, some different types of vacuum tubes, and it, just using a single electrode to excite them. And I wanted to uh, look at the spectrum uh, using my uh, new sp cool spectrometer. But the problem is, it appears that it does not like to get too close to RF sources. It locks up very easily. So you do not want to use this near an RF source, because it's not going to be happy about that. So I, I can't get it too close to this tube, or it's going to lock up again. So I'm going to have to use DC tubes to look at the, to calibrate the spectrum. Okay, that's unfortunate. Or I need to figure out a way to shield this better, but it is locking up every time I bring it close to my RF uh, device over here. I'm afraid I'm going to burn it out if I don't be more careful. Okay, well, that's a cool tube I built, huh? Very cool. Uh, okay, so I looked through my stash of science stuff and I found some neon bulbs, but they didn't have a very high res or they didn't have any resistance on them. So I want to try to run these with the uh, 110 so it doesn't uh, mess up the um, spectrometer. 110 at 60 hertz. And um, so I need to put a lot of resistors in there to knock the current down through the, through the, through the tube there. And uh, we'll see if we can get a spectrum of this. Okay. Okay, so here is the clip bleeds. You might notice them that I used in my um, nurse lamp experiments. And let's just uh, try to flip the power on over here. I'll see if we blow out this light bulb or not. Okay, that's pretty bright, but um, okay, it's not burning it out, so probably should put some more resistance in there, but we'll, we'll just see if we can get a spectrum out of that. That should be interesting. And again, it seemed like our, our little spectrometer does not like high voltage RF signals near it, so we're going to have to accommodate that or figure out how to shield it or something, but it seems to lock up a few get it near RF fields that are too too intense. Okay, so let's see, we got our computer up and running up here. And I wanted to put the uh, spectrometer kind of down away from it because the screen makes a lot of light. And here's our neon light bulb and I have it hooked up to a special switch that I made out of a uh, power strip. And let's try to turn it on. Okay, and let me, uh, let me turn off the lights so we can uh, try to get a good spectrum of this without interference. Okay. Oh, gosh. Ugh. Okay, so here is our spectrum, and our switch is down there. And I'll just, I'll come on. Like I said, McAfee is a curse. Get rid of this thing. Okay, so let's well, I've got the spectrum off. And I'll flip it on. Oh, look at that. You can see the lines. And I think if I remember right. Okay, so I'm going to try to. Uh, oh, let me, let me turn this thing off there. Okay, so there's the lines, the spectrum. And we got our light down there. Better take the spectrum before that thing burns out. Um, spectrum image. Okay. And let's say, uh, okay, I'm going to use the mouse pad here to uh, determine where should we put this? Maybe. Okay, libraries, PC, admin, try this PC, I guess. This computer is so slow. I'm going to turn the light off while I'm 
trying to save this. Let's try to put it in documents. Okay. Make a new folder. And, uh, S P E C T, we'll call it the spect, I guess. I'll we'll call that. Okay. And. Oh, is this a JPEG? I wonder. Okay, so PNG, TIFF, exit, EMF, EGIF. Okay, so. Okay, so the, I guess this just exports a JPEG. So, let me try. Turning the spectrum on. And. Oh no. Spectrum image. USB camera 2. Name JPEG. Okay. Click on that. Okay, so it's incrementing that number there. So let me let me just take a look. I'm gonna turn my neon light off so I don't burn it out because it's running pretty hot. I put about four or five kilo ohms of resistance in there, and I suspect I probably should have put more in. Let's see if I can find those uh, pictures from the download. Okay. Okay, so here's File Explorer, this PC. Um, I clicked it a few times. Okay, was it Documents? And there's Spectrum right there. Let's see if we can open that up. Come on. Okay, looks like it's got some files in here. So let's just take a look at what these are. I'm going to double click on that one. Come on. It looks like a picture of the spectrum. Uh, this computer is a dog. Let's see if we can get that to open up. Okay. And oh, there we go. There is the spectrum. Okay, so it looks like we'd be able to save a JPEG of the spectrum. I'd like to be able to export the uh, the comma separated values though, so we'll see if we can figure out how to do that. Very cool, huh? Okay, so I, um, there. Let's get rid of this. I expanded the screen by just pulling the corner down, and it looks like I, I couldn't figure out a way yet how to export CSV. Maybe you can. And it looks like it kind of um, does a peak search and tells you what the peaks are there. So that's helpful. And I made the image a lot bigger so you can read it easier. Let's see if I can change the focus on this. Okay, well. 658, 697. Okay. That's pretty cool. Anyway, so there is the neon spectrum. Put the neon light down there. Very cool. Okay, so I wrote an email to um, <clears throat> the uh, people that made the spectrometer, and they told me that uh, it should be able to do uh, comma separated variables, but they said, I hope you're using version 3.1, and I was using version 
2.5 of the, the uh, spectra, um, spectrometer code. And so I asked them, how do you get it? And they, they sent me a link. And let's take a look. We'll just make sure that this is the right version here. So hopefully this is the right version. Oh, okay, this, why it does that? Okay, so, oh, okay, yeah, it's got save data file, so this wasn't there before. About, okay, so, okay, see up here it says this is version 3.1. Okay, so that's the version they said I should be using. Um, okay, so let's see. Save data file. This computer is really doggy. Let's see if I can change the location where we're saving this because it just chose that for me. And that's not necessary. Oh wait. Users office. Okay. For some reason it saved the the correct address when I updated the um oh, interesting. It's not taking an active spectrum though. I'm not sure what's going on. The other one was running continuously. Slot, slot. Okay, I don't know. I still have it hooked up to the spectrometer, but let's take a look here. Should be on USB 2. Okay, so this one does not seem to be. Does not seem to be pulling up a spectrum. Let me let me fiddle with this and see if we can figure out what's going on here. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but I had to restart the computer and restart this program a few times. And now it looks like version 3.1 is finally working. I had to choose the USB camera setting right there. And um, let me see if I can get my spectra going. Spectra lines, and let's see if we can save data. Um, spectral image. Let me see. Save data file. I'll have to look at the directions again because he sent me some directions on how to do this. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can get the comma separated values working properly. We'll get our neon light on. Get it adjusted. Okay, there we go. So now we got a good spectrum there, and you can see it in the window up there. So you can actually, as you move the uh, spectrometer back and forth, you can see the image move into a more favorable pos position or less favorable. Okay, there. Well, that's pretty good right there. Okay. And, uh, okay, so in order to do the comma separated values let's see they said under tools you can go to data separator and you can choose whether it's tab 
uh, colon space or comma and space and so I'm going to put it on comma and space let's see if it took that okay so comma and space and then um, I guess you just do save data file and uh, let me go into our place where we've been saving these let's see if I can find the folder again and uh, see if I can see the comma separated values oh come on okay so it was under oh come on really user office document spec Okay, Spectrum file. Let's take a look there. Uh, I may use need use to may need to use the um, right click to open with or something. Open with uh, Notepad, I guess. Oh, look at that. Looks like looks like uh, comma separated values and lots of them. Oh, very cool. I'm not sure what they are, but let's see if I can decode them. First one's probably frequency. Oh, okay. I see. There's a frequency there, space, and then this must be the value on the spectrometer that's frequency dot so it looks like the top frequency is 270 and the bottom one is uh, almost 1200 very cool so I'll see if I can get something to plot this with maybe and we'll take a look at the spectrum Okay, good news. It looks like I installed OpenOffice on this computer. And we'll see if we can open it up in that. Should be interesting. I'd like to make sure my data doesn't look like garbage or something. Let's see if we can get that opened and plot the spectrum. Okay, so here is my open office, and it looks like it opened it up, but, okay, and I was trying to find the rest of the data, and it looks like I put it way over here, because they put a bunch of spaces in there, but it looks like the data is loaded up, I'll just have to del delete the col columns in between, so let me get this loaded into our spreadsheet, and then um, we'll see if we can plot the data up. such a dog okay anyway so I always promote uh, anything ABM anything but Microsoft because Microsoft is evil so this is our open office and looks like we got a spectrum there well this there's, there's some kind of weirdness in here I'm not sure what that is maybe there's a skip in the data or something and it just drew a straight line between it because the rest of it looks like spectrum but it looks like between about 600 and 800 there is a straight line so let me just scroll down in the data um, let's see how do I do this let's scroll down in the data to see what's going on here oh, yeah it looks like there's some data missing in there for some reason maybe it didn't parse correctly that's what I'm suspecting oh what the heck let me let me try reparsing it because I suspect maybe I parsed on a decimal point or something and I didn't parse it properly. That's weird. Or maybe it put extra spaces in there or something. So looks like we're getting our data out, but 
for some reason it didn't parse the same all the way down so we lost some sections of it so let me see if I can re reload it in and reparse it and see what's going on Okay, so that time I got it to parse a little bit better, and there is our neon spectrum over the whole range. Very cool. Um, hindsight's twenty twenty. I guess uh, the way they're doing it is they don't add in the same amount of spaces, and the way this thing is parsing it, it, it considers each space, even though they're consecutive, as um, a different space, so it's, it puts the data in different columns. And uh, it seems like it would have loaded it up properly if I would have just used fixed width, because that's another way of parsing it. Because it seems like the data is put in fixed width, but then I chose to put commas in there, and so the commas would be a problem, because it was putting a comma at the end of each of those numbers. So I couldn't use uh, fixed width, because I had to take the delimiters out. But uh, I could have not put the delimiters in originally with the uh, when I saved the files, because you had a choice of just spaces or comma separated or semicolon or whatever. And so hindsight's 2020. I guess I should have just done spaces if I'm going to use this type. You know, maybe some other uh, spreadsheets don't have that issue, but anyway, looks like you can get the data out. And uh, very cool. So we can use this to, this is the neon spectrum. We can use this to figure out what. Uh, what our unknowns are, possibly. Look at a spectrum of things we don't know what they are. Figure it out. And, wow, lots of peaks, huh? Very cool. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Very cool. Testing out our new spectrometer, Thunder Optics. I'm very happy with it. $99. Uh, Seems to be pretty nice. Anyway, we'll be using this for lots of fun stuff soon. This is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.